Hello NASCAR fans, Chris Terrell here with RotorPros.com to bring my daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks and race preview for the Bojangles Southern 500. The final bye week of the season is now over, The most one, one of the most anticipated races of the season. Uh, very important race as well because there is only two races left in the regular season. So we've got some drivers who've got wins, they're going to be looking for playoff points. We've got some drivers that are you know, somewhat comfortable in terms of points right now. But then we've got a group of drivers, four or five drivers that are right around that bubble. They're going to be uh, battling for playoff, you know, more points at the end of stages, stage one and stage two. Um, and we'll talk about those drivers a little bit here when we move forward. Before going forward, uh, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to get over to rotopros.com. Get your three-day trial if you sign up for a weekly membership or a seven-day trial if you sign up for a monthly or a yearly membership. We, you get access to our Slack channel. That's where most of our, our uh, members-only content takes place. We've got members-only cheat sheets, which have additional write-ups, highlights, additional stats, models um, for all sports. I've got that baked in there. We've got, we cover NHL, NBA, NFL, which starts next week, NASCAR, PGA, MLB, closing out the season strong here. So get over, see what we're all about. Get in the members only chat and get those added benefits and we're sure you're going to stick with us for the long run. So what we're going to do here in this video, I'm going to go and we're going to talk about practice. Both practices happened yesterday, qualifying today. We had um, the inspection process happen before qualifying. So this lineup is official. One note, Eric Almarola had to go to a backup car in practice yesterday. So he will start from the rear even though he does have a qualifying position, uh, different qualifying position obviously in the race. So we'll want to pay attention to that. Um, probably going to be a GPP only play just because of that anyway. So let's just jump in. We're going to take a look at the track here. It's a 1.366. 1.366 mile oval, sorry about that, turns uh, 1 and 2, 25 degrees, turns 2 and 3, 23 degrees of banking. As you can see with the picture below there, um, the track is more of an egg shape, which makes it very, very tough. And the start-finish line uh, down here at the bottom, what we're going to want to notice there is that... Um, Going into turns one and two, you know, for the first couple laps on new tires, drivers are going to be able to go pretty much wide open through there. The biggest point where a lot of drivers have trouble, where you're going to hear about that Darlington stripe quite a bit, is over in turn three. Because as you can see, you're coming, you're going to be going about 175, 180 mile an hour down the back stretch, and you're coming into this very tight turn in turn three, and that's where a lot of drivers will hit the wall. That's where the race, I think, is going to be won and losses in turns three and four, obviously. So um, we've seen some, some very close finishes over the years here. So it's a very challenging track. It wears out tires very fast, so strategy is going to be a, bit, be a big thing this week. Uh, track position is key. It correlates very highly in terms of... Uh, starting position to finish in position, so we're going to want to pay attention there as well. With that, let's just turn things over to the cheat sheet and have a look at some stats. So we'll start here with track history, and we're going to look at, first of all, we're going to sort this by finishing position over the last two years. So this is just the last two races. So you can see you've got Denny Hamlin, Brad Kozlowski won the last race here. Uh, Denny Hamlin just before that, the year before. So a couple guys that stand out looking, you know, between current track history and track history. We've got Kevin Harvick. He's got six straight top tens here with five top fives and a win in 2014. He's also led 200 plus laps twice. That's 2016 and 2014 for him. So he's been fairly, fairly consistent here. His price uh, on DraftKings under 10K really stands out there. So he's going to be up there as a core driver for me. We'll go ahead and we'll look at his practice. Uh, he qualified 11th, as we can see here. Um, in practice, he didn't really show a ton of speed. In first practice, he was 16th, didn't run a 10-lap run. And then over, as you can see here, in practice 2, he was 15th. And then he was 6th in 10-lap averages. So that was good to see. He's got kind of a long-run car there. Um, 11th in qualifying, so I, I definitely think that he's going to be a top 10 car at the end of the race. So he's going to pick up a little bit of place differential there. It gives you that little bit of a discount, so I'm definitely liking that as well. I'm actually just going to go back and I'm going to sort this just by price, and so as you can see, he is 6th in pricing on DraftKings, so that just really stands out. Um, he's, you know, with the track history that he's got here, he picks up a little bit of place differential, even if he's like a fifth to sixth place car at the end of the race, he's picking up a little bit of place differential and he comes with that discount. So he's definitely going to be a core play there for me here this week. 
Um, another driver that stands out. Looking at things overall, I mean, going looking at track history, he stood out. Uh, Denny Hamlin, obviously. Um, he's got two wins here, 2017, 2010. And he's got top 10 finishes in 11 of 13 career races. And he's got the number one, uh, looking at uh, career track history, 6.2. Career average finish here is 562. He's one of four drivers with 500 plus laps led here. And he's got a little bit smaller sample size than all those drivers. So he's someone that we can consider. He didn't do as well in qualifying as we'll have a look here. He's starting back in ninth. Times, he looks like he's easily got a top 10 car. He was 11th in first practice, 6th in 10 lap averages. And then he was 8th in final practice, 2nd in 10 lap averages. So they improved that car. Came out for qualifying, started ninth. Again, I think he's going to be uh, up there fighting for the win at the end of this race. So I will be paying up for him more than Kyle Busch, even though Kyle Busch is starting 33rd. Um, had some problems. It looked like maybe an engine issue in qualifying that he didn't that he started way back in 33rd, but they took it to the garage. They had a look. It seems like things are good. He had it on his cool down lap going into the garage. He said things sounded fine. Um, it is an impound race, so they're not going to be able to make a ton of changes. So it's maybe a little bit risky there that maybe it was an engine problem. I'm not 100% there, but he does come with elite place differential value. But this isn't a track where he um, has had a ton, of, a ton of success over the years. He hasn't won here since 2008. He does have top 10s in seven of his last nine. Um, but that, at that elite price, we're not looking for top 10s from Kyle Busch. We're looking for... Um, well, you know, this week's, I guess, a little bit different. Top 10 gives you 23 bonus points. It's going to be close if Denny Hamlin's the dominator. Kyle Busch comes ahead and finishes, you know, 5th to 10th somewhere in there and picks up that 23 to 28 bonus points for place differential. Who's going to be ahead? But with, them, with Denny Hamlin and a couple other guys that I'm going to talk about below here, I'm going to be a little bit underweight on Kyle Busch um, just because maybe a lot of people will go to him just because of the place differential, especially on DraftKings. I feel I can build a more balanced lineup with, you know, similar upside in terms of fantasy points and just save a little bit more and not have to dig down, especially on FanDuel, raise $1,000 more, $500 more on DraftKings and Hamlin um, down into this bottom range. So I'm kind of leaning Hamlin there as of now. I'm going to, you know, build some lineups and we'll talk about a little bit more on the live show tomorrow once I've gone through and I've built about uh, 20, 30 lineups. Uh, the live show, by the way, will be tomorrow afternoon, um, probably around 3 p.m. Eastern. I will know a little bit more uh, into the evening tonight and early tomorrow morning, and I will be posting that in the Roto Pros chat as well as on my Twitter account at Jaeger underscore bombs9. So moving on, uh, the next driver that stands out, he's number one in my model, as you can see here. He was number one in my model before practice and qualifying, Kyle Larson. He's finished third in two of his last three races here, top tens in four of his five career races, third best career average finish at 7.6. Um, he's also led 408 laps in the last two races here. And then we go and we look at his qualifying. He's starting on the second row behind Kozlowski and Byron um, in third. He had the third best practice average combining the practice times. He was sixth in first practice and then really, really fast in final practice. He was second overall and then first in 10 lap averages there. He's actually going to be my pick. I think he can get up there and pass. I think he's got a better car to be able to pass Byron and Kozlowski early in the race. And he's probably going to be my top dominator. I'm going to look at things a little bit closer, like I said, make a determination going into tomorrow's live show. But right now, he's my favorite driver, all things considered. Price, um, as you can see here, he's 11.5, so he's sandwiched between Truex and Harvick over there in Fandle, so he's a little bit better priced on Fandle, but with the Dominator upside as the fourth most expensive on DraftKings, I'm definitely looking at Kyle Larson as a core play for me here this week as well. Eric Jones, uh, going down the list here a little bit, um, he's ninth in my model. He's raced here twice in a cup car. He's finished fifth and eighth in his two career races here. He started in 15th, um, 20th and 19th in the first two practices. He was seventh and 10 lap averages, so Kind of just put that in the middle, start in 15th. I think he's got a top 10 car as well, so that gives you a little bit of place differential there. I don't particularly think he's going to be winning upside. I think his upside is kind of 3rd to 5th. I think his floor is somewhere between 8th and 12th, 8th and 13th. So definitely looking at him at his price, 8700 on DraftKings, 10-2 on FanDuel. Kind of right there at the top of that, that mid-range. Um, can build a nice balanced lineup with him included, and I will be using him on both sites. Kurt Busch, number two in my model this week. 
He his last four finishes here. Um, he's gone sixth, thirty fourth. He was involved in a crash. Then he's gone third and sixth. So sixth or better in three of his last four. Go look at the career numbers here. He's got three only three top fives, eight top tens, and twenty two races here. 11.2 start in position, um, average start in position, 16.9 average finish position. But just with the speed that they've shown in those cars, Larson and Kurt Busch, 1 2 in my model, those Chip Ganassi cars are most definitely on my radar. They both look like they've got top five cars this week um, when things play out. So I think playing them together makes a lot of sense. Um, you don't particularly need to stack at a track like this, but both those cars are running very well and look to be. Like I said, top five cars with winning upside. So I, Kurt Busch definitely at 9,100, 10.5 on FanDuel there. Makes a lot of sense as a core play as well. Brad Kozlowski, like I said, he started on the second row beside Byron. Uh, last four finishes here. Second, he led 196 laps. He finished ninth, led 47 laps. 15th, finished third, and then he won last year. He only led 24 laps in that race, but he's had some success here. That was his first career win here. And I'm just going to scroll over and have a look at some of his stats. Fifth in the model overall. Five top tens in 10 career races. Led 274 laps. 11.3 average finish. So he's definitely there looking at his practice times. Starting second. Not too good, I guess you could say. He was 19th in opening practice. They found speed. Top, looks like top five speed. Sixth in one lap uh, average there. Sixth best time. Fifth best 10 lap average in that final practice there as well. So starting second, I don't particularly think he's a dominator. He's definitely got that dominator upside. He's shown it before at this track. He's shown it before this season. He's also shown it before on these um, intermediate tracks with the new rule package. So I wouldn't rule him out of being a dominator. I just feel a little bit better about Kyle Larson myself. So that puts Brad Kozlowski more of in a GPP spot for me this week. And that the same goes for William Byron. Not as much into the GPP side of things, just because of his price, 7100 on DraftKings, 8200 on FanDuel. Um, I will start in on the poll, even though I don't think he, at the end of the day he's going to be the top dominator. Um, I think he can lead enough laps early on. You know, even if he gets 10, 20, even 30 laps led at the start of the race, I think for that price, if he still finishes top five, even top 10 for FanDuel, I think that still makes a lot of sense. Um, for points per dollar value out of Byron there. So definitely going to be a part of my core on both sides a little bit more than Kozlowski, just because it's a little more riskier for the price. If Kozlowski doesn't lead that 20, 30, even 50 laps at his price, he he's probably going to lose some positions, obviously, um, finish outside the top five or top 10. Then you're starting to lose a lot of value, whereas we can really take on a, a fifth to 10th place finish from Byron, being that he's almost $3,000 cheaper. So that's the way I'm looking at those two drivers starting on the front row this week. Joey Logano, he's finished top five in three of his last four races here. Um, he probably come in a little bit under-owned, just with a lot of people looking at Hamlin now, looking at Larson below Logano there in pricing, Kyle Busch with his place differential value. I think Logano um, and even Martin Truex in that sense are going to be, uh, because of Kevin Harvick and how good he's been here at this track, I think Truex and Logano may be coming in a little bit under-owned this week, um, so I think they make good GPP pivots. Uh, Logano is starting seventh. Like I said, he's got top fives in three of his last four races here. He didn't really show that top five speed in practice. He was 14th in P1, 9th in P2, and then 10th in 10-lap averages in both of those practices. But they're an elite team. This is a long race. It's all about adjustments. You're probably going to see about 12 to 14 pit stops overall. Um, you're going to be adjusting your car to try and make it work at both ends of the track. So that's some of the challenge here. So there's a lot of opportunities for some of these elite teams, especially when we're talking about the teams on pit road, to get a car that maybe wasn't perfect in practice to come out and, uh, you know, find that speed and get up there in the top five and challenge for the win. So don't rule Logano out just because he started in seventh and maybe didn't show better speed than that, especially if he's going to be under own. And then looking at Truex, He's starting 22nd. Uh, he's probably not going to end up under-owned. I kind of forgot about him starting 22nd because he has shown top 10 speed, top 5 speed in final practice in terms of 10-lap averages. So I think he makes a good core play for cash games, especially being uh, on DraftKings. You get the place differential value. He's only 5th in pricing. So that's probably where I would lean if you're starting a cash lineup would be with Truex. Um, even a Truex-Larson combo is about 20800 um, together. 
Larson's only 11-5 on Fandle, so you could definitely, combining those two makes a nice safe floor. I think it gets you that Dominator upside with Larson, as well as the place differential upside with Martin Truex Jr. Ryan Newman stands out here as well. We'll go look at some uh, career track history. That's track type, sorry. Career track history here. Um, he's been very good, very consistent here. Veteran driver. 12.1 average finish. He's got seven top fives and 13 top tens in just 20 races. So that really stands out for me. Um, looking at his qualifying time, he started in 24th this week. He didn't, again, veteran team, they, they did find a little bit more speed in P2 after P1. They were up into 23rd, uh, one lap time, 18th and 10 lap averages. I don't think he's got that top 10 upside this week, but 10th to 15th place finish I think is kind of his upside. Start in 24th at his price at 8300 on DraftKings, 8400 on FanDuel definitely makes sense as a value play. Chris Buescher, uh, three career races here. He's finished 17th, 17th, and 13th, so top 20s in all of his races. He's only 7300 on DraftKings, 7200 on FanDuel. More of a GPP play because he's starting 12th this week. Um, I think he's going to be very low owned because of that but I wouldn't rule out a 10th to 13th place finish for him as his upside. Um, probably a little bit better of a fan duel play for me this week because there's a good chance he's going to lose some place differential, which hurts a little bit more on DraftKings. So he's going to be a little bit more of a fan duel value play for me um, at that uh, low 7K price tag. Ty Dillon's raced here twice. He stands out a little bit on the, on the track history side of things. He's finished 13th and 21st. Um, right here is 25th in the model. He's down in that 6K range, uh, low 6K range on both sites, which really stands out to me starting 29th. He was 29th in first practice, 14th out of 15 cars and 10 lap averages, so that doesn't really stand out a whole lot. They found a little bit of speed, I guess you could say, um, going into second practice. He was 28th, 22nd in 10 lap averages. That was out of, I believe, 25, 26 cars. I think his upside is probably 20th to 25th. Um, Kind of his floor is going to be 25th to his starting position right there at 29th. So I definitely like him at that price. Uh, and unless something, you know, mechanical failure, which is kind of hard to project, stuff like that going on, penalties that can't really project that kind of stuff. Dylan makes a good points per dollar value in that low 6K range. I'm just going to sort this by price one more time. We're going to have a look at a few of these value guys kind of down at the bottom that I'm looking at right now. Uh, we talked about Byron. We got Menard. He showed some. He flashed some top ten speed. Um, qualified seventeenth. He's probably more of a twelfth to sixteenth place. Maybe a little bit worse than that. Kind of right around his starting position. So a little bit more on FanDuel than DraftKings for me. If you think he's got that upside, you want to play him in GPP on DraftKings. You think he can finish twelfth somewhere in there? I think he's worth it over there under seven K as well. Um, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. I think they're going to. They've showed a lot of speed. They were thirteenth in opening practice. They were fastest in final practice. Lost a little bit when it, in terms of they were 16th and 10 lap averages in that final practice, but they're a team that is outside on points and pretty much needing a win to get into the playoffs with two to go. I think they're going to make some bold strategies. Definitely GPP only play for me. He started in 21st, and if they do make that bold strategy, maybe get out front of the field going into that final stage. You can even finish top five um, starting 21st at that price with that place differential. And they're going to be going for that win. I think he makes a very good GPP play with a ton of upside this week. Talked about Ty Dillon. A um, couple other guys I'm going to be looking into. Just maybe grab, you know, if you're punting, and maybe looking at some guys that uh, um, can scrape together a little bit of place differential coming, you know, right near the back of the pack. Like you got J.J. Yaley there. He didn't run that final practice. So I'm kind of looking at guys that are going to be running both practices now. There's not a whole bunch intriguing here. Like you got Matt Tift. He was 31st and 30th. He was last in 10-lap averages, so I'm um, not really looking at that. But he's looking about a 30th place car. He started in 32nd. I think that's a fine punt. 5,200 on DraftKings, 3,000 on FanDuel. Obviously, it's like a free space to be able to go ahead and get uh, four top-tier drivers along with him and just kind of hope that, you know, if he was to go ahead and finish 25th um, to 30th, I think that's a win for him um, at his at his price. Castle, I'm not really looking at. Starting 25th, he 33rd and 32nd in practice and kind of right near the end of those 10 lap averages. So he's starting too much, too far forward for me. I'd rather go up to the high 5K range, low 6K range and look for guys there. 
Um, Priest is going to be a GPP play starting 20th. I'd rather go Ross Chastain in that same price range with 11 more starting spots uh, position there. Michael McDowell, GPP starting 23rd. I'd rather go with uh, Bubba Wallace is probably a little bit more of the safer play there. Um, just with that little bit extra place differential. So that's the way I'm kind of looking at that. And in terms of drivers that are, um, you know, looking at the playoff bubble and stuff, I just want to kind of go over that here quickly before we end this video. So we've got obviously the drivers that have got wins, and I'll list them in order of the wins. So we've got Kyle Busch, Danny Hammond, Martin Trucks Jr. They've all got four wins. Brad Kozlowski's got three. Chase Elliott, Joey Logano. Kevin Harvick, they have two wins. Then we've got Kurt Busch and Alex Bowman with a win. They're all locked into the playoffs. They're going to be looking for, you know, more wins, winning stages to get those playoff points. Kyle Busch is going to be looking to stay ahead of Logano for that season-ending um, championship, which gives them 15 bonus playoff points as well, which is huge come the playoffs. So, you know, gives gives these drivers a lot of upside because they're not going to be looking for points. They don't care about finishing 10th versus 11th in the stage um, especially at the end of stage two, you're probably going to see those drivers pit, get their cars ready for the final stage. So they're starting a little bit more up front, going to have a fast car to go for the win and get those points. Then we've got drivers who are fairly comfortable in points. We've got Ryan Blaney, 686 points, Kyle Larson, 665, William Byron, 664, even Eric Almirola, 654. The fact that he's starting towards the back kind of takes away a little bit of his upside. I think they're going to just try and get the car um, so that they not they're obviously I don't think they're going to get anywhere near top 10 points at the end of stage one possibly by the end of stage two but they're looking for um, not to to lose it and get down into that bubble range which those are the next drivers a little bit more to risk here Eric Jones 646 points in 14th place Ryan Newman this is where it gets really tight is Ryan Newman 603 Daniel Suarez right in the bubble at 591 and then right behind him is Clint Boyer 589 Jimmy Johnson, 565, and then Paul Menard at 520. He's kind of getting into that deep area where we're going to need wins. Then you got Busher, Stanhouse, Benedetto, Austin, and Ty Dillon. Uh, Daniel Hemrick, Ryan Priest are getting outside the top 25 there. Those drivers are all going to be looking for wins. So that's just kind of the way that that's going to shape up here for this race. Um, if you've got any questions before the live video or anything you want me to cover in the live video that I maybe didn't touch on here, definitely hit me up in the chat room or on Twitter, like I said, at Jaeger underscore bombs 9 um, I will cover it in the video. It is open, so there it'll be like a question period. I'll be answering a ton of questions on the YouTube video, so make sure to join me for that. I'll be sharing that link um, in the members-only chat as well as on Twitter, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for checking out the video. Let's go make some lineups, um, some temporary lineups for now. I guess the lineup is official, so you can go ahead and do it. Um, but like I said, if you've got questions, hit me up, and I will have the live video tomorrow. Let's go make some lineups. Green screens, everyone. Talk to you later.